This video is sponsored by me, that's right. Are you somebody that was watching a streamer, but then they got way too much money, so they moved to Mixer, Facebook, etc.? Well, guess what? I'm not a big streamer. I'm not moving anywhere, so I'll be on twitch.tv slash the macro show forever. So what does that mean? For anybody interested, I'm finally going to have an actual stream schedule. That's right. I will be streaming Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. But Macro, that's only two days a week. Hold up, hold up. Every other Friday, I'll be streaming early morning. But that's still not enough streams. Uh, don't worry, because once a month on a Sunday, we're going to have our usual supporter Sunday. And what that means is that if you are a Twitch sub, you can play with me, Macro. Also, I'm no longer going to have a Patreon because I'd rather just focus on Twitch instead. But you're probably wondering, Macro, why would I even subscribe to you, dude? <laughs> because I got these sick new emotes! <sighs> but Macro, I can't watch all your streams all the time. Is there a way that I could watch your streams, like, afterwards? I'm making a second channel. It's called Macro Live. I'll try to upload once every two weeks with some stream highlights of whatever stream I think was really fun. And uh, the links are down below, but, you know, check it out after the video's over. Now, let's start the video. Hi, it's me again. Today, I'm going to be going over the top 10 best games of the decade. And what that means is I'm going to try my best to look back at the decade at games that had the biggest influence on gaming, were just overall amazing games, and or three made a big difference in my life or in games that I currently enjoy, because that's also a factor. I feel like it's weird that I have to say this, but these are all my opinions. So if you disagree with them, you know, just say it in the comments, but you don't have to be like rude about it. Things that are excluded from this will be games that came out too late in the decade like Smash Brothers and Apex Legends. I mean, they're great games, but they're not necessarily the best game of the decade because they came out at the end of the decade and there's no way to tell what their influence will be at this point in time. So without further ado, let's start with this top 10 list, Watch Mojo style. I feel like everybody forgot about Mass Effect 2. I mean, the first game came out before the decade even started, and it wasn't the greatest, but the idea was there. But I think what really cemented what this game has done is when you play Mass Effect 2. Because in Mass Effect 2, all the progress that you made for the first game carried over to the next game. And that was a trip. I never had a game that, like, had that much detail. If somebody was dead in Mass Effect 1, they remained dead in Mass Effect 2. And that completely changed the story. The reason why I'm putting this on the list is because I think this has greatly influenced a lot of games that are like this. All the games that are super story driven, that have multiple layers and webs of, of endpoints. Games like the Telltale games, where they have these lasting impact. You could see the initial roots of this in Mass Effect, and I think it'd be strange for me not to put this on the list. This next game I feel like would be the least surprise for my channel, and it's Overwatch. I think that Overwatch, regardless of its flaws and regardless of the fact that I think in its current state it's not that great, it's a pretty important game to help bridge the gap for a lot of people. What I mean by that is there's some people that don't like shooters, but they like Overwatch. There are people that don't like class-based type games, MOBAs and stuff, but they like Overwatch. And that really has helped people get into MOBAs, helped people get into shooters, helped people get into gaming, period. I know that a lot of people are going to say that Overwatch is just a TF2 clone or like a, a remake of Team Fortress, and to an extent it has a lot of influence from that but you can't deny the character based stuff that overwatch has brought to the table and the art style that's influenced a lot of other games as well esports has been part of the conversation a lot and you can think a small part of that into overwatch obviously there's other games and they're going to be on the list later that have a bigger impact on that sense but overwatch has really helped bring the casual market to that side as well even if you hate it you can't deny that at a point it was a really great game so growing up, I played Grand Theft Auto 3 and I thought that game was wild. We didn't even have a memory card. So we would just keep playing the beginning missions, get that out of the way and then just mess around, do these cheat codes, which is like R1, R1, L2, L2, left down, right up, left down, right up. That would give you like unlimited ammo or unlimited guns on the PS2. It was amazing. Grand Theft Auto has stayed consistently coming out great and getting better and better each time. And I think that Grand Theft Auto 5, which is our next entry here, does an even better job than its predecessors. That game is is big. I know that sounds weird, but there's just so much you can do and so much stupid stuff you can do. There have always been free roaming games like Fallout and whatnot that have like these side missions and stuff, but GTA has really sold itself on trying to almost make a whole new life for yourself in this game because you can do tennis, you could be doing like workouts in the game, stuff that doesn't necessarily grow your character or make them any better, but it's just like, you can do it. The game in, in general, I think, opened the door to even bigger open world games that are also on this list. 
I grew up playing The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and at the time, I thought that that was the best Legend of Zelda game. Like, no other Legend of Zelda game could top that. Boy, was I wrong. Breath of the Wild is incredible. Breath of the Wild is what Zelda should always have been, because it has its linear, you know, story that you could follow if you followed it to a T, but you can straight up ignore Zelda and the princess and all that stuff and just have a great time. Just climbing mountains and stuff. Like, I hiked in real life growing up. I went to Yosemite and Half Dome even, but like, the climbing and this was so immersive the game in general was just so great it was just so simple i think breath of the wild is going to have a lasting impact on how people view open world games from here on out if you just essentially took other games and gave it the breath of the wild treatment where it's open world your game just gets better i'm looking at you pokemon wild area that's not freaking open world it's stupid <laughs> The Last of Us is on this list because there isn't a game on this list that has a story that I think has shown to people that games could be more than just games. You always had like those big things like movies, television, music, like those things could be art. But video games? No, that's not art, dude. It's video games. But then Last of Us comes out. If you ever played that game, the immersion, you can just watch it like a movie almost. That game is subdued in its style and in everything and its narrative. It's super heartfelt and it's heartbreaking at times. It's cold and calculated it's gorgeous that game is gorgeous i don't want to say much because i don't want to spoil anything because i think everybody should try it at least once because maybe as a game it's not the greatest but as a story and as a way to immerse you into the story you can see its influence on god of war on other games that have come out that have crazy stories that you can think of i'm pretty sure that they learned how to do it well from the last of us the game that is essentially Nintendo saying, what, you think you can make a better Mario game than us? And the answer, surprisingly, is yes. I think, especially in this day and age of, of online streaming and people watching other people play, Mario Maker came out at the perfect time. Everybody wants to try out these amazing levels, but if you're not even good at the game, it's still fun to watch people beat the levels at extremely record times. Something about Mario Maker feels really creative while also being really competitive in its own way. And there's no rules. I think that's the best part about it. Like, there really is no rules. I see the impact of Mario Maker throughout this decade, but even in the future, when other games try to do the same thing, I'm looking forward to that. I feel like this decade could be called the decade where esports got taken seriously because in the beginning people were like, uh, esports people, like why would people watch that, boomers? But now it feels like it's a mainstream thing that people just take seriously. And it's thanks in no small part to the biggest esport, League of Legends. League of Legends has been dominant this entire decade. They have shown how to be a game with longevity. This game came out a while ago and it's still being played all the time by a lot of people. People would always come up to me and be like, is it true that this esport had more viewers than the Super Bowl that's a little inflated because this esport is watched throughout the entire world and the Super Bowl is only watched in the United States. The point that's made with that statistic is to show that the viewership numbers is there, which means it'll be taken seriously. Look, I'm not that big into MOBAs. League of Legends is not my favorite game of all time, but I can't deny the power it's had this decade to just pull esports to the mainstream. <laughs> And followed by that is going to be a game that's going to get a lot of booze when I say it, but uh, number three goes to Fortnite. <laughs> Sorry. Look, if you're going to be like a memer, you're going to be like, ooh, Fortnite bad, whatever. You can say that as much as you want. I'm judging this based off, one, how the game is and its influence on the entire market, the entire gaming industry has been shaken up by this free-to-play structure that we can't get rid of. It has a billion players consistently shown its staying power. It was in freaking Avengers. Like, what the heck? Fortnite is a game that has pulled Battle Royales to the mainstream. Before, PUBG was its thing and like H1Z1 and whatnot. And those games are not small by any means, but... Fortnite is definitely what made it the most popular thing that it is. It also is what catapulted Twitch to be what it is as well. Twitch and Fortnite are like tandem. They're like, they go hand in hand. A lot of kids are going to grow up with Fortnite being their equivalent to Halo 3. For me to just deny it because I personally don't like the game that much would be stupid. <laughs> This one's not a controversial pick because it's a game that anyone that has played it would agree is freaking iconic and has changed the game drastically and that is Dark Souls. Dark Souls has shown that a game that is not necessarily easy for critics to play and for people to play is not going to stop people from playing it. This game, this type of game has a market. If it wasn't for Dark Souls, we wouldn't get Cuphead, we wouldn't get all these different platformers that, that we've been getting, these indie platformers that have all been super difficult to beat. And I think once you finally successfully beat bosses, there's a different type of satisfaction that has not existed. Like, I don't think there's been games that have been this difficult that I've ever played until Dark Souls came out. 
Let me whip out my phone because I don't remember my honorable mentions, but here they go. Red Dead Redemption, Shovel Knight, PUBG, Witcher 3. I have never played this game. I think it probably could have made the top 10 if I played it. CSGO. The number one game of this decade has to go to Minecraft. So I've mentioned the influence that games have had throughout the entire decade and, you know, their importance for different categories and different stuff. But Minecraft, Minecraft was there at the beginnings of, of YouTube, not like the actual beginnings, but you know what I mean? Like close to the beginnings of YouTube and Minecraft is still here. Nothing else has the staying power like this. Nothing else is as big as this. Nothing else is still as fun as it is. Minecraft has essentially skyrocketed again, but it makes sense why. It's a game that is so simple, yet so complex in its own way. You could play it any way you want. There's no other game that's this much of a sandbox. I don't play Minecraft as much as I used to, especially now that SMP Live is gone, but I think that a lot of people can agree that this game deserves its spot at number one. It's the game that really encompasses all the good that gaming has brought. The communities that were made throughout these years, the creativity that was shown, and just all the fun that you can have with friends, online, or even just alone. It's my little house, guys. Check it out. It's my first ever building I've ever made in my entire freaking life. But what do you guys think? Go ahead and make a top 10 list down below. Even throw in some honorable mentions. There will be links right here to my new channel right here. Bada bing. So I'll catch you guys in 2020. I'm out.